I cannot believe my luck tonight. There's actually still stuff to talk about in the Donald Trump tax return that nobody's really concentrated on yet. And yesterday, when I read Donald Trump's tax return, the one that was reproduced in the New York Times in print, I circled one number and only one number. The most important number in the return to me and to Donald Trump. The number that exposes Donald Trump's darkest secret. And I can't believe that that number is still just sitting there in the tax return. And no one's really talking about it yet. The New York Times article didn't even really mention that number. It is the number that humiliates Donald Trump. And so I'm not the only one who's happy that it's still sitting there waiting to be talked about. Donald Trump has to be very happy tonight with the media coverage so far because no one has paid any attention to that number on his New York State tax return, the one that is most important to him. It's not the $915 million in losses that the return shows. That's the thing he insists makes him smart because that's the thing that allows him to pay no federal income taxes possibly for 18 years. Losses like that apparently still allow Donald Trump to pay zero income taxes because in the debate last week he had a very easy opportunity to deny that he pays no income taxes and he didn't do that. Or maybe he doesn't want the American people, all of you watching tonight, to know that he's paid nothing in federal taxes because the only years that anybody's ever seen were a couple of years when he had to turn them over to state authorities when he was trying to get a casino license and they showed he didn't pay any federal income tax. So that makes if me he's smart. <laughs> you know, if Donald Trump was paying federal income taxes now, he would have said, that makes me smart, and I pay a lot of federal income taxes now, or I've paid a lot of federal income taxes since then. We had gotten to the point Sunday when the New York Times revealed these documents that it wasn't really surprising news that Donald Trump paid no federal income tax. But what we got on Sunday was very, very important. It was proof that he paid no federal income tax for the tax year 1995, and it was proof of something else. Something that is Donald Trump's darkest secret. Donald Trump's darkest secret has nothing to do with how his hair is attached to his head or his marital infidelities or his many business bankruptcies. There's plenty of public information on all of that already. Donald Trump's darkest secret is the truth behind the piece of his image that is most important to him. And we know that it is important to Donald Trump, very important, that you think that his fingers are not short even though his every hand gesture proves the opposite. It is very important to Donald Trump that you think that the cylindrical protuberance that you cannot see, that you would never want to see, is not short. Look at those hands. Are they small hands? <laughs> and he referred to my hands. If they're small, something else must be small. I guarantee you there's no problem. I guarantee it. Donald Trump is obviously oblivious to the general societal agreement among virtually everyone who can spell the word psychiatrist that verbal guarantees of that sort are usually contraindicators. That sort of guarantee he felt compelled to offer from the presidential debate stage is almost a guarantee of the opposite. And so, so it is with male bragging generally. If you tell me what a guy brags about, I can tell you what he's lying about. And what does Donald Trump brag about the most? What does he brag about more th even than body parts? What does he brag about even more than his ability to romance women who have a strong attraction to moneyed men? What does Donald Trump think is the single most important thing about Donald Trump? I'm really rich. Oh, I'm one of the very rich. In all fairness, I'm rich. Hey, I'm rich. I'm rich. Have you ever heard this guy say that? I'm very rich. How about this guy? Did you ever hear him say that? There are a lot of richer people than Donald Trump. Bill Gates is 20 times richer than Donald Trump, according to the Forbes estimate of Donald Trump's wealth. Forbes estimates that Donald Trump is worth only half of what Donald Trump says he's worth. Forbes says he's worth only about $4 billion. Each Koch brother, is worth 10 times more than Donald Trump, according to Forbes, each one of them. But what if Donald Trump 
isn't even worth what Forbes says he's worth. Forbes has never had a chance to look at Donald Trump's 1995 tax return or any tax returns until now. And there, in line six of the return, is the most important number in that tax return for Donald Trump and for me. The number Donald Trump never wanted anyone to see, Donald Trump's earned, actually earned income for 1995 was only three and a half million dollars. Three million four hundred twenty-seven thousand ninety-two dollars. That is less than local New York, New York TV news anchors earn in a year. Three thousand four hundred twenty-seven ninety-two dollars. Three million, sorry, three million four hundred twenty-seven ninety-two dollars. It's a huge income, just a huge, gigantic, life-changing income for anyone who doesn't call himself a billionaire. Billionaires have incomes of hundreds of millions of dollars a year, some of them a billion or more a year in income. There are corporate executives with incomes of $40 million a year, employees, $40 million a year, and they're not billionaires. It's hard to be a billionaire. It takes a lot of money to be a billionaire. Most ultra-rich people who have more money than they know what to do with are not billionaires. Shortstops and actors make $15 million a year, and they're not billionaires. $3.4 million in earned income in 1995? Eight years before that, Donald Trump was claiming billionaire status. You are the antithesis of the billionaire recluse, the Howard Hughes, aren't you? I don't know about that. I know that I work very hard. I love what I'm doing. He also knows that Howard Hughes was a real billionaire, and he isn't. Of course, if Donald Trump was only lying about billion, being a billionaire right up to the 1990s, and then he actually became a billionaire, he could prove that by releasing his tax returns. But as of now, all of the tax information that has ever been seen on Donald Trump shows him to be a billionaire only in his own mind. Joining us now, David K. Johnston, the Pulitzer Prize winning journalist and columnist for The Daily Beast. He is the author of The Making of Donald Trump. Also with us, Daniel Shaviro, Wayne uh, Perry, professor of taxation at the New York School of Law. Uh, David, the other thing I noticed on there was he's got $7 million in interest income, which is an indicator of maybe $100 million in, asset, in, in interest producing assets. 100 to 150. Yeah, and, and we're still, there's no indicator of billionaire in these tax returns. There, there is no evidence whatsoever that Donald Trump is a billionaire. He's a wealthy man. Anybody yeah. makes 3.4 million right. is a wealthy man. Right. But there's no indication at all he's a billionaire, and there never has been any indication. So how did how did he <coughs> pile up the 915 uh, million in losses? You have mapped it out, and I I read it, and I believe I understand it, but I can't explain it. It's well, one of those things that I only have in here now. I haven't got it to the point where I can say it. Start with a billion dollars of highly leveraged assets that your banks uh, put up all the money for and mismanage them is, <laughs> yes. is the short version right. of that. But what's astonishing is what he did with this $900 million. It's only good for 18 years. Mm -hmm. That means he would have to be making way above $3.4 million or even with the interest $10 million a year for it to be useful to him. He can't take it all. He will run uh, negative income. Uh, all the way until it's run out. He mm -hmm. wasn't even smart enough as a businessman to figure out how to reorganize his finances so that other people could, in fact, buy those tax losses and reduce their own tax bills. Right. Something, by the way, I advised him to do over lunch in 1990. Uh, but, Professor, let me, th this thing about the, the 900 million, if he really was a billionaire and he had a year where he made, say, 300 million, yeah. if he did that three years in a row, that loss would oh, disappear yeah. in three years. The fact that he could use that loss for 18 years is an indicator that he's making less than, on yeah, average, $50 sure. million a year. You know, it's a funny number in that thing that he only paid himself uh, $6,000 of salary, although I think he might have been overpaid given that he was using <laughs> $900 million. Yeah. So uh, that was sort of... Uh, the tax lawyer in me says that's kind of an attempt to scam the Social Security and Medicare systems by having very low, right? Yeah, especially in Medicare, it never runs out. You have to pay tax on that, so he pays himself a low ball salary. But then again, maybe he because should have paid he, because less. you only pay payroll taxes on that salary income, so yeah, he gets to keep right. it low. Uh, but but you've also uh, raised the possibility 
that even in the debt, it's other people's money, yeah. meaning it's oh, yeah. other people's debt that he's exploiting for his tax return. Yeah, I know the, the money he put up was mainly debt money, and so is the bank. So I think uh, net operating losses, some tax people will say, well, if you lose the money, you shouldn't have income until you earn it back and more. But if he was losing other people's money, that's kind of a different kettle of fish. Uh, David, uh, what 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 else would you divine from what we've got here so far? Well, I, I think the most fascinating thing is something a little bit different, and that's how he used uh, the tax code to get out of an a immediate tax bill. When the bankers wrote down a, almost a billion dollars of his debt, when your debt's canceled, that's income to you. If you didn't yes. pay the bank back, you right. don't pay taxes. And it, there's a provision the real estate l lobby got into the law that says, well, if you have other buildings, you can reduce their value for tax purposes and defer paying the tax. So that's what Donald does. He shifts it. And then he creates this company that's a publicly traded stock held company and puts these now reduced value buildings into it. People buy this stock, they lose their shirts. The stock price goes from $35 down to 17 cents. But Donald gets $82 million in salary as the that, company that, loses a billion. That stock collapse was the Atlantic City casinos thing. That's right. Where, the, where you could buy stock and it's starting at about 35 bucks when, when it's, and then right. by, the, by the time you woke up, uh, basically it was at it 17 cents. It was gone, cents. and yet Donald got $82 million out of the company as it lost under his chairmanship $1.1 billion. I mean, this is, Donald's history here is, lose money and take a lot for yourself and leave your workers, your vendors, and now your investors in the lurch. Well, because that's smart. Uh, he is saying on the campaign trail that he's going to fix everything that's wrong with the tax code. In fact, I think we might have some sound of him saying that today. Is that ready? I understand the tax laws better than almost anyone which is why I am one who can truly fix them. I understand it. I get it. And that is what I commit to do. We want fairness. We want money brought in. And we want money to be spent when it goes out, because they spend our tax dollars so unfairly and unwisely. Remember that. Professor, if he's going to make it fair for everyone, he has to change basically all of the laws he's well, I mean, using. I don't think he's read his own tax uh, plan right. because it does nothing but cut taxes for people like himself. It, it uses, it gets rid of none of the schemes that he appears to have used. So uh, it's kind of funny that he would say that. By the way, uh, even if he appeared more capable of like reading lengthy uh, statutes and regulations than we seem as the case, no man in his position is going to be doing his own tax planning. That's what right. you hire lawyers for, right. accountants. We're going to have to leave it there for tonight. David K. Johnson and Daniel Shaviro, thank you both for joining us tonight. Really appreciate it.